In this video, I want to talk about MHC molecules and the concept of antigen presentation. MHC molecules are also often referred as AGLA genes in humans. That really means the same thing. MHC stands for major histocompatibility complex because one role of MHC molecule is that they determine tissue compatibility. So histocompatibility, histo stands for tissue. So they are major determinants of tissue compatibility. That just means that we have lots of different alleles for most of these HLA genes. And therefore, if we want to transplant, for example, a kidney from one person to the other, we have to match these genes. But this has nothing primarily to do with their role in antigen presentation. And to in this video, we want to talk about their role in antigen presentation. What do these molecules do? They present antigen to T cells. So we already discussed in another video that in contrast to the B cell, which is our humble cell, which takes everything. You don't need to kind of present it in a specific way. You can just throw antigen on a B cell and it's gonna react to it. It is not very picky in what it takes, but the T cell is our arrogant cell. T cells are very picky. They only wanna take peptide. And also a cell needs to come and present it to them. And you can think about the MHC molecules as nothing else than a gift box. It's just like the way that the T cell wants to see the antigen. And again, it also only takes peptide, only peptide, and it needs to come in the real present box. And that's our MHC molecules. So MHC molecules are these like cup holders that just bring the peptide to the T cell in order for the T cell to see it. There are two different MHC molecules. There's MHC1 and MHC2. And let's look at their structure. So the MHC1 molecule is one kind of large alpha chain. And here is a peptide binding cove. And as nobody can stand on one foot, well, there's just this other beta-2 microglobulin, which Mother Nature gave us, which is the same actually in every human, which just holds up the MHC1. And you can remember MHC1 kind of on one foot. The MHC2, in contrast, stands on two feet. And there's an alpha domain and a beta domain. And both of them make up the peptide binding growth. What do MHC molecules do? Well, they're just this gift box that present the peptide to the T cell. They are basically kind of a billboard, what's going on. And the MHC1 molecule is a billboard for what's going on inside the cell. So the MHC1 molecule shows peptides from the inside, endogenous peptides. They are made, they're just showing whatever is going on inside the cell. So if the cell just makes certain proteins at the moment, they show up. If the cell is, for example, infected with a virus and the virus takes over our own machinery, well, there are gonna be viral pe proteins, viral peptides made, and they are gonna show up. They can show both, self and non-self, depending on the situation. If everything is healthy, there's only going to be self showing up. But if there's something going on, a viral took over, we're going to also present viral peptides, and then they're going to present non-self. Let's look at the M MHC2. The MHC2 is the billboard for what's going on outside the cell. So they are going to show peptides from the outside of the cell. In the absence of an infection, there are going to be some self-peptides endocytosed by the cell presented. But if there is any infection, they are going to present exogenous microbial peptide for the recognition by the T cell. I also want to mention that for both, for MHC1 and for MHC2, the packaging, meaning putting the peptide into the gift box, happens in the, inside the cell. MHC1 is sampling inside and then the peptide gets loaded inside. For MHC2, it's sampling outside and then after phagocytosing or endocytosing, it's going to be packaged inside the cell and then shows whatever it has found outside on the MHC2 molecule and presents it to the CD4 T cell. Who has these molecules? MHC1 is expressed on every nucleated cell. In contrast, 
MHC2 is only expressed on antigen presenting cell. So this more professional, sophisticated cell that have the job of sampling the outside to figure out if there's any exogenous that needs to be presented to the T cell. And so it's only expressed on macrophages, dendritic cells, and B cells also on thymic epithelial cells. This totally makes sense because MHC1, as we said, is a billboard for what's going on inside the cell. That means any cell could be potentially infected. Any cell has to have the capacity to tell that there's something going on wrong inside. Therefore, any cell should have MHC1 molecules to alert a T cell that something going on wrong inside. MHC2 presents what's going on outside the cell. Not every cell has to report what's going on outside. Therefore, we have our sophisticated cells, the antigen presenting cells that do this job. Now we come to the last point, which is often referred as MHC restriction. What that really means is that MHC1 will only present peptide to CD8 T cells. In contrast, MHC2 will only present peptide to CD4 T cells. You probably have figured out by now that T cells come in two flavors, CD8 and CD4. The CD8 is also referred as the T killer cell, and the name already tells you it kills a cell. The CD4 cell is also referred as T helper cell. It helps other cells to do a better job. It should totally make sense why MHC is going to present to CD8, because MHC shows what's going on inside the cell. So if a cell is virally infected, well, the only thing that would help is to kill the cell. Therefore, it's going to present to CD8 in order to kill it. If there's something going on wrong outside, if there's an extracellular bacteria around, well, we need T helper help, we need to start making antibodies, we need to make uh, sure that our macrophages are activated, all things that the CD4 T cell can do. Therefore, if there's something going on wrong outside, the CD4 T cell needs to be alerted. Here I just show the binding of the T cell receptor of a CD8 T cell to MHC1, and you can see here that the CD8 molecule really also binds to the MHC1. It gives kind of the extra hug, confirms, yes, that's correct, that's MHC1, that's what we want. And here is the CD4 T cell, which recognizes the peptide MHC complex, but then also needs this confirmation, this extra hug through CD4, which really binds to the MHC2 molecule, and then can help to activate the CD4 T cell. This concludes the video on MHC molecules and their role in antigen presentation.